In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create cool glitch effects like this. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create glitch effects like the ones you just saw in that edit in Adobe After Effects. I'm gonna show you how you can create them for free, no plugins needed, and hopefully it won't be too difficult for you either. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into the program. So you can see here, I have the edit loaded up and I won't play through because you've already seen it, but you can look in the effects panel here and kind of see the effects that I use for this. So I use Hollow Matrix to get this glitch effect that we have. And Hollow Matrix is an effect from Red Giant. You can see me toggling it on and off right here. Of course, Red Giant means that this is a paid effect and a lot of the Red Giant effects aren't cheap. I think Hollow Matrix is great because it gives you these really cool looking glitch effects with pretty much one click, like very little effort. You don't really even need to know what you're doing. But Red Giant products aren't the most accessible. Like they cost a lot of money. Maybe you can't afford that right now. Maybe you just don't want to pay it. And that's totally reasonable. So I'm going to show you how you can create this glitch overlay without using Hollow Matrix like I did so that you can get this same effect without paying the money or at least something very similar. So let's come into right here in this tutorial composition that I've got. You can see I have Hollow Matrix on the clip. We're going to disable and we'll actually just delete that because we don't need it for this. And we're just going to work on building a glitch effect that is similar using the tools that are natively available inside of After Effects. So let's begin by adding the curves effect to this. So we'll write curves right here. I'm not going to go into the effects and presets panel from now on. I'm going to just use FX console, free plugin for getting to your effects in After Effects faster, linked in the description. I feel like I have to do this every time I go into After Effects. But anyways, we're adding the curves effect to this clip and we're going to adjust the red, green, and blue curves separately. So let's go to red. Yeah, you know what? I actually like the red one down a little more, more of a blue tone, a little bit more of a glitch type of feel that way. And let's move the green and the blue. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's kind of the color that we want. Obviously there's a lot more for us to add to this. Let's start by also adding a glow effect to our clip. This is ridiculous right now. We're gonna to tone that down. Let's start by toning down this glow first and foremost. The intensity can maybe go to 0.3. Bring the threshold up. Radius a little bit, threshold down. Can the radius go up a little more? Maybe like there. That's not bad. So you can see without the glow and then with the glow, the jersey is just like really glowing. We can even turn that down a little more. Look, this is all to your taste. I'm just kind of doing this willy nilly as we go through here, but don't take any of these values that I'm using for any of these effects as like set in stone. Kind of play with them, see what works best for your clip and proceed accordingly. Now I want this glow to flicker because I feel like it just kind of like sells the glitch effect more when you have like flickering elements. So we're going to add a wiggle expression to glow intensity here. So just hold option or alt on PC and then click and it'll bring you into this area here where you can like write expressions. So we're gonna write wiggle and then open brackets. And the first value here is going to be like the frequency, like how many times per second this effect is gonna wiggle. And the second one's gonna be the amplitude or like, which is basically like the range in which this effect will wiggle. So let's say we want this frequency to be five. So it's gonna change five times per second. Then you put a comma. And let's say we want the range of this effect to be 0.2. So we want the value of glow intensity to go either up or down by 0.2, and it'll happen five times a second. So it should give us like a fairly subtle like flicker in our glow effect. So you, now when I play this through, you can see that we kind of have like a small flicker in the glow, which isn't bad. We can actually make this a little faster probably. Let's try making it like eh, eight. Yeah. I think that's a little bit better. So you can, again, you can play with these values. There's not like set in stone, but I think that looks fine for now. Maybe we just make that glow a little more like that. 
Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna stop playing with that. I could tweak these numbers for days. All right, next we wanna kind of break this clip up a little bit and give it like that wave look that where you can kind of see like there's like bars going through it almost. So we're gonna add a wave warp effect. And let's change the type from sine to square. We will change the direction to 180 degrees so that rather than being up and down, we have these things going side to side. And let's reduce the wave height and the wave width to very close to zero, not quite zero, then there's no effect, but very close. So we're gonna bring this down all the way to like two and two. Yeah, I think that's fine. Two and five, yeah, sure. This looks good enough to me. Let's bring the wave speed up a little bit. And now you can see that we kind of have that like moving block line effect, which kind of like sells the wave warp glitchiness of this whole thing even more. Now we're going to kind of use track mats the way I did in my initial edit to add another layer to this glitch effect. So let's duplicate this layer we have here. We'll call this, we'll call it clip two for now. I'll change the names in a bit. And we're going to grab this Luma mat that I have. It's basically just like, if I pause it, you can see here that it's just basically thick white stripes and thin black stripes with it with like a flicker so that sometimes it's fully not visible, sometimes it's fully visible. And then sometimes you just have like little squares of it that are visible, but like this is super easy to create. If you don't want to create this, I'll put a link in the description. You can just go download it and then you can use it in your project. We drag this in and we're going to use this as a alpha mat. So basically the white areas in this glitch layer are going to be the parts of the video that we just had below where we like did all the effects that are gonna be visible. So you can see here, we have the entire thing white. We'll just go in here to where it says track mat and if you don't have that, you can just click on that and then all of a sudden you get this track mat column so we're going to go to the initial clip that we edited and we're going to set it to Luma Matte. And now you can see that this clip is visible everywhere where there's white, which right now is the entire clip. But as I move forward here, there's no white on the screen. If you actually look at our glitch effect and here you can see like there is, there is white. So the Luma Matte shows the entire clip. Here, there's only white in that section. So the Luma mat is only showing the clip that we edited in that section. And this is gonna help add another layer to our glitch because now we have this duplicate effect. So we're gonna turn our, du our duplicate on. Our duplicate does not have a Luma mat to it. And we're going to reduce the opacity of this duplicate to let's say 20%. We don't want it to be too, too bright. And then we'll duplicate this again. And let's call this one no effects. And then we're gonna come in here and as you would assume, delete all the effects off of this clip, turn the opacity back up to 100. And now we have this clip with lots of glitch on it, flickering, and it's flickering between this clip here that's fully glitched out to this clip here that's only 20% visible. You can see how they toggle it on and off. There's a very small glitch here. I toggle it off and there's no glitch at all. And that's kind of like our base layer. We can even turn this up if we want. Let's make this to like 30%, maybe even 35. We want there to be somewhat of a discrepancy between the full glitch and like the soft glitch, but we don't want it to be too crazy. But now when we click through this, you can see that we have this glitch effect happening, very similar to the glitch in the original edit, but we just use effects that are at our disposal within After Effects without paying. All right, now I also wanna show you how you can create like a glitch overlay transition just using that one file that we had, which is a bit like with the white stripes. So I brought in the second clip here just so we can have something to transition to. And we're going to create a transition similar to the ones that I had. So let's grab this, gl this glitch video right here. We can grab any part of it really, just drag it in and we'll chop it up like this. Cool, so now we just have this one part, one, two, three, four, five frames, maybe go six frames, sure. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe we wanna make this a little bit faster. Let's go time, time stretch. 
and we'll set this to 50. That'll speed our clip up to twice as fast as it was before. And now when we play it through, yeah, okay, that's, that's like a nice, much better flash for what we want. So let's click S to get the scale property. We're gonna scale this up so it covers the entire frame. And now very simply, we're going to add a lumetri color effect. And we're just gonna adjust the temperature and the tint here to get like a nice blue effect similar to what we had. So we'll bring the temperature and the tint down. There we go, that's pretty good. And let's stay on a part where we can almost see the entire effect. And now we're gonna add a glow effect to this, just like last time. Let's turn this glow down a little bit. We can increase the threshold a bit and we can increase the radius. That's not bad, but obviously we don't want these black parts showing. So there's two things that you can do to get rid of the black parts in this and they're both gonna give you a different look, but they're both very good and valid to use in this situation. So the first thing is just to go to your blending mode here and change the blending mode to something additive like add, lighten, screen, linear dodge, anything like that is gonna work for you. So I'm gonna click linear dodge and this is gonna get rid of all the black parts. And now when we play it through, we just have the overlay there that flashes. And I think that's very good for like a quickly little flash glitch overlay. If you want a slightly different look though, let's put the blending mode back to normal. You can also add the luma key effect and set it to key out darker as it is here. Let's bring this up a little so you can see it. We'll have this set to key out darker and then we're just gonna increase the threshold until all the black is gone, which doesn't really take that much. But you can see as we increase the threshold more, it slowly gets rid of more and more black. And maybe we leave it like there or something. That's kind of cool. And now when we play it through, it's like, the, it's like a little bit of a different flash. So the parts that are visible are more opaque and more visible rather than kind of getting lighter and blending in with the scene. And you still have all the black parts that aren't there. So two different looks, both very valid, both fit the theme of the video. You can use both of these in your video just to change things up a little bit. I actually would recommend that you do. There's one more thing I wanna to add to this. If you go layer, new, solid, create a new solid for yourself, let's just make it any form of like light blue. So we'll just color pick this blue right here in the scene. And we're gonna click Command Shift D to place that cut and then just delete the part that is over our first clip. We have this solid now. Let's go and add the Venetian blinds effect to this clip. And we're just going to do the uh, transition completeness until we have a size bar that we like, maybe something like that. And we'll change the direction to 90 degrees so that it's going sideways. Now let's add a glow effect to this. And we'll adjust it accordingly, just so that it's how we like it. That's not bad. And let's flicker the glow threshold. You can see the glow threshold makes quite a big difference as it goes. So we're gonna flicker that. We have a wiggle expression like we did last time. So let's say eight times a second and we'll have it go 30% either way as it flickers. So that's not bad. And we'll reduce the opacity to maybe 30%. And let's actually click E to get effect. I think that this glow is kind of too intense. So let's go to compositing options and turn the effect opacity of the glow also down to 30% so that the glow is a little bit less noticeable. Yeah, sure, I think that's fine. And let's add the motion tile effect to this. And we'll change the output width and the output height to 200 for the motion tile effect on this solid we've created. And then we're just going to change the tile center so we'll add a keyframe at the start of our solid to so tile center as it is now. Then we'll come to the end of our solid and we're just going to drag the tile center out 
on both axes. And this is going to make the lines here in, if I turn the opacity up, you'll be able to see it better. This is going to make our lines actually move across and kind of create this like line overlay thing that I like. So we'll turn this back down to 30% so you can see how this actually looks on top of the video. And I think it adds another layer to this glitch effect. If you don't want to have like this cross thing, you totally don't have to. Just don't change this value over here. So we'll change that value back to 540. And now all of a sudden you don't need to deal with that other line coming across. And I think that kind of adds like a little extra look to this glitch effect. You don't need to do that, it's totally optional. But anyways, I think I've covered everything that I want to talk about here. So that is how you can create the glitch effect that I showed you at the start of this video without any plugins whatsoever. No need for Hollow Matrix, no need to go get a Red Giant subscription, nothing like that. Anyways, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to hit the subscribe button because I post videography and video editing tips tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis and I would love to have you around for that. If you have any further questions about this, if you have any comments, you just want to say, hey, whatever, drop it down in the comment section. I'd be happy to help you out there. I know I also kind of like did this video on the fly and improvised a couple of things. So I understand that things may not be as clear as they could have been otherwise. Um, so yeah comment section. That's where I can help you out. Anyways, that is going to be all for this video. So until next time, peace.